Hey Funnel Builders, Mike here from Sell Your Service and today I wanna to talk to you about how I uploaded, recorded and published a video every single day for 109 days. I wanna talk a little bit about what I learned, what I do differently, what I really enjoyed and the results of the 100 day video challenge. Oh man, you can tell it's a sign of age when the silver hair is the only thing that shows up on camera. So first of all, I think it's important to understand why I did this. Why would I record a video every day? The idea was originally to do it for 100 days. Now, there were a lot of reasons. First of all, my coach and friend and mentor, uh, Miles Beckler, recommends using it. It's a challenge from Miles. There are a lot of different people who use a 100-day challenge. To, to create content or to do something. There's a, a lot of running ones to just run every single day for 100 days. And what I really wanted to do was to learn how to make YouTube videos and learn how to create video content. It also allowed me to flex my video muscle. The more I use it, obviously, by doing something once every day for 100 days, you learn what some people would take two years to learn if they just did it once a week. So that's why I wanted to do it, is to really accelerate my growth. I wasn't too bothered about subscribers. I wasn't kind of expecting like a, a massive spike in subscribership or in followers, but it certainly was a reason was to be able to give enough content for people who did visit the site in order uh, to be able to have more things to view. My content was pretty weak beforehand. It was kind of all over the place. There was everything from email marketing to reviews. And what this forced me to do was to create content that would be coherent throughout the entire process. I also wanted to narrow down what it is that I enjoyed and what I wanted to talk about. In my opinion, the fastest way to get to know a platform or a media or a tool or a skill is to do it so often that you end up understanding what it is that you enjoy about it and what you want to talk more about. It was only through writing blog content every day for something like six months that I really understood that selling marketing funnels, sales, running a business and money management were the areas that I loved working with funnel builders in. And so when creating video content, I wasn't sure, is it going to be different topics? Is it going to be reviews? Is it going to be just face to camera videos like this? What is it that I'm going to want to be able to do? And the only way I kind of realized I'd be able to do that is by creating 100 videos in a row. A lot of people have a go at the 100 day challenge for a lot of different reasons. They say, oh, it's not very good for subscribers. The reasons I wanted to do it is because I wanted the 100 you know, units of experience. I wanted to do something a hundred times in order to be able to understand where I'm going. The interesting thing is now I understand just how little I know about video and how little I know about YouTube, but it has been a massive learning experience. So I want to go over some of the bullet points as well of what I learned. Is it what I learned or what I learned? First of all, lighting. I've actually got a light here. Uh, uh, let me show you. In fact, I, I'll show you on another video, but let me show you. So I have an um, umbrella light behind me just to have this kind of really bright, vibrant white light focused down on me. That to me was probably the biggest improvement in a lot of the videos is you can see when I start to use a light in front of me, it helps eliminate some of the shadows, it helps soften the focus a little bit, make it a little bit easier to watch. That was probably the biggest learning curve I let went on. Speaking to my um, colleague Mark Fontaine about who's from the Service Design Show, you can go down a rabbit hole with buying stuff. I've got a Logitech Brio camera, it's a 4K camera, it's very good. I've also got my Blue Yeti microphone. I've used a bunch of different microphones. Sometimes I even just use my phone. Again, I have got a video about all the equipment I use to record it. But in my opinion, the lighting was kind of the biggest difference. However, the most important thing above the quality of the video is the quality of the sound. If the quality of the sound is good, people can put up with low quality images. It's a really bizarre phenomena when we have really high quality video, but really low quality audio. It actually is harder to watch, but if you have low quality video, as long as the audio sounds good, then people are more likely to watch. The long-term kind of effects of this is, the more visible I am, the more credible I am. So if I was producing a video every day on a certain subject, it did yield me results. I found customers, I found clients, I made sales, I can track all this through my analytics. It also landed me a couple of pretty big jobs and, and speaking opportunities because I was able to say, look, I've produced all this content. It landed me another video, like a paid video promotion, so I'm gonna be creating video for somebody else. The more I did it, the more opportunities seemed to come my way, which spurred me to keep going. That's not to say that it wasn't 
difficult. There were days where I just didn't want to record anything. There were clear benefits to doing it repeatedly and I did see the advantages of doing that. YouTube converts as well. This is something I learned. Our affiliate sales went up, our traffic went up. Video does. I know a lot of people talk about it, say video is the kind of wave of the future and this is what everyone's consuming now and it really does. I was surprised actually at just how much engagement I was getting. My list growth went up, obviously my subscribers went up, the amount of traffic that I drove to my website from YouTube went up and we created a lot of content and I was able to transcribe that content and turn it into podcasts. So creating video every single day taught me that there's an enormous opportunity that I'm still staggered that other people aren't taking advantage of. I haven't yet broken a thousand subscribers. I don't have a problem with that. I think that's just inevitable. It's going to come very, very shortly. But it's really interesting just how deep the connections are that I've been building with people based on creating video content. It's a bit like blogging for the first time as well. Like the first video is probably pretty bad. I know that over time I got better. It's not the producing the video. It's not any of that that's scary. What's scary is hitting the publish button. Thinking uh, people are going to have a go at the video. My commenting system isn't right. My tags aren't right. The description's not right. I haven't got enough links in. I haven't got any cards. I haven't got any end screens. And you have to just do those first few bad videos in order to start getting good. And this is probably leads me on to the biggest thing I learned is that the more I did it, the more open my eyes became to all the possibilities. We now have a pretty good description game. We have a pretty good tag game. We're ranking for a few search terms. And the more I do it, um, the, the more I see the results and, and see what it is that I've learning. I've learned. I've invested in a couple of courses on creating video content and they've already helped us generate revenue, attract a few customers. So yeah, creating video every single day basically taught me how to do something very, very well. It's more the case of I now know what's possible and what's ahead of me rather than learning everything. I am still a rank amateur when it comes to uploading content, creating you know video content, editing I'm pretty terrible at. I don't really know what I'm doing with editing. I certainly didn't know when I started. You don't realize how much you don't know, but doing this every single day showed me the potential of what's out there, the, the kind of broader scope. Here's what I do differently. If I had infinite money, I would hire a bunch of editors. So I'd record it, I'd send it off to an editor and say, hey, can you turn this into like something good? They'd probably have a pretty good idea on editing strategy and teach me a few things about how to shoot it to make it easier for them and the overall like kind of story that I wanted to tell. But I would probably outsource the editing if I could do it differently. And we are now looking towards outsourcing editing content. The first 30 days, I did two videos a day because I wanted to give myself a buffer. That was really hard work. It was very good because again, it, it really accelerated and taught me how to record videos, where to record videos, the quality, the length, smiling at the camera, looking at the lens, not the screen. That made it a lot easier, frankly. Having this big buffer made it a lot easier because then when I started going down to just one video a day, it allowed me to take all of that experience and think, okay, well, I don't have to edit and shoot two videos today. I can give myself a bit more time. So it did make it easier, but it is a slog for the first 30 days. It was, it was really interesting though. I think I'm now learning that story and content are way more important than editing. My most viewed video is me talking to the camera about click funnels. There's almost no editing. The lighting isn't very good. The sound isn't very good, but it's got over 7,000 views now, which I know in the scheme of YouTube is tiny, but it does really well for us. It ranks really well. We get a lot of conversions from that. We get a lot of traffic from that video as well, as well as quite a few affiliate sales from Beaver Builder. The story that I tell and the engaging kind of personality that I try to put across and smiling at the camera and all this kind of stuff, that's what gets people to stick around. Not clever editing, not having flyovers and transition scenes and all of this kind of stuff. At its core, the story and the content are what convert and what people watch. I also learned that I need to add links to all my videos. So I have to go through to my descriptions, make sure I'm adding links to the blog post, make sure I'm adding links to the Facebook group, make sure I'm adding product links and make sure I'm adding links through to all sorts of different types of content. I also noticed the more links I added, the more traffic I got, which seemed really obvious now, but it's a very quick way to be able to rank your videos and drive traffic back to your website.
website is adding links and it was something I was just not doing. The last thing that I learned is that I have to comment on my own video. So I have to post the first comment and kind of break the ice and say, hey, what did you guys think? Let me know in the comments and then I might ask a question, but also replying to every single comment. I think one of the reasons that people are now starting to comment on my videos is because I'll reply to every single one, at least at the moment I do, um, because they've taken the time to write something and I think it's really important for me to say, hey, thank you so much for your input. Thanks for your question, your comment, your feedback, whatever it is, I, you know, I'd love to know more. And then I'll ask them a follow-up question and I'll say to them, are you a member of the Facebook group? Have you read this blog post? Have you seen this video? So it's a really genuinely good way of engaging with you know, an audience that I'm building. I really enjoyed getting over my fear of talking to the camera. As someone who even talks publicly and has been filmed quite a lot in the past, it was really difficult for me to be able to just set up a tripod on like the bridge opposite my office or even in my office. And everyone knows that you know I have a video uh, a YouTube channel and I have a podcast and I blog a lot and I speak a lot and I've written books but being able to talk like this in front of other people with other people around you or just having the camera there and the phone with you know a Rode microphone or something just kind of recording it was quite intimidating and I did get over that eventually like I walk down the street now filming myself talking to the camera for you know 10 20 30 seconds or whatever and I just don't care so I, that's helped me really get over that and I love that I've got over that fear I actually quite enjoy uploading videos I really like the process of taking the video into YouTube, working out the tags. I use vidIQ, which um, Sean over at Video Influencers and, and Sean's um, course have taught me to use. And I really like finding the right tags, writing the description, linking back to things, creating the end screens. I actually quite like that process. I was surprised that I would like that process, which probably suggests it's something I should actually outsource rather than doing it myself because it is an admin task. Um, so I, I, I really enjoy doing that. And I also love getting new comments and seeing new subscribers. I It's the, the only notification I have on my phone is when someone comments on either my blog or in this case my YouTube videos and it will come a little comment through. I love that because that's someone taking time out their day to have a conversation with me, engage with me and I think I should do everything I can to engage with them back and reply to them and respond to them. I absolutely love that. Getting new subscribers, it is addictive. You kind of want to keep pushing that barrier closer and closer and closer and I've celebrated every small milestone so I really enjoyed that. Yeah. So what's happened? We we attracted new subscribers. Like I said, I'm just shy of a thousand now, but it's only a few days away till we kind of break that. So I'm really excited about that. I got better and faster at creating video. Because I had to edit all my own videos, it taught me how to shoot better. So therefore, I was kind of just setting up a camera, talking to it. I did a lot of planning beforehand. I'll probably go over my planning um, content and my schedule and how I kind of created, you know, all the ideas for the videos but the ability to just set up a camera. And also, it, I stripped away a lot of the, the, the extra shit. I've got all this gear behind me and stuff, but a lot of the time it was just my phone. I was just holding my phone, talking to the camera, and I would edit it back later into some kind of coherent video. As long as I had a story or an arc, that was what's important. I learned a new skill, ultimately, of shooting videos, and I love doing it now, and I think everyone should do it. You should be constantly talking to the camera and document what it is that you're going through. My takeaway is that the story is more important than any of the, the, the gear or equipment. If you've got a smartphone or just a webcam, you have the ability to make some outstanding content. Yes, there are some very clever editing techniques. You know, Peter McKinnon and Casey Neistat, they kind of set the bar extremely high for how you should be editing videos, but just talking to a camera and uh, have making sure you're in front of a window maybe, have a semi-decent microphone, but you know, your phone microphone is pretty good. Even if you've got headphones to just plug in, that acts like a lapel mic. There's no reason. 99% of people's reasons for not filming video is their fear and they have to get over that fear. So yeah, this is, to me was, was a really interesting experiment. Let me know if you've done the 100 day challenge, either for blog content, for podcasting, for video. I'd love to see it. In the meantime, guys, I've probably got a couple of videos either side of me on video content, you know, because to link it all together. I've got a link in the description below of how you can discover the perfect niche for your marketing funnel business. In the meantime, thanks very much for watching. I'm Mike from Sell Your Service. Consider giving us a like and a subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video. Keep building those funnels.